Maybe you're like me. Maybe you had Christian McCaffrey. Maybe you had David Montgomery. Maybe you're dead inside. Um, and you need to know, what do I do on the waivers this week? Who do I go after? How much fab? What priority do I spend at all these really important positions? This is a great week for waivers. There are plenty of running backs, plenty of tight ends, plenty of wide receivers. So stay tuned. Check it out. Win your league. Don't give up if you're hurting. Stick with us. We'll get you to the promised land. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, share with your friends, and let's go get a W in week five. Footland, the right outfit, can bring out something special in us. And with Indochino, creating your best look yet could be more affordable than you think. It's been a while since we've had to suit up, America. But Indochino has you covered because it is a completely custom fit suit. I have one. I have never experienced a suit like this. Look, I've experienced a suit off the rack. You're like, okay, this thing's good enough. But it does not fit you like a glove. And that's what Indochino does. And it's a completely custom fit suit. They have shirts, casual wear, and the prices are fantastic. I went down to their showroom. It was incredibly fast. I could not believe the, the amount of time it took. And then in just a few weeks, boom, a custom fit suit showed up to my doorstep. Indochino is now open at select Nordstrom stores, giving you an, uh, even more ways to get a great fit and personalized clothing. Visit your nearest location at Indochino.com or find your nearest location at Indochino.com. And right now you can get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com. Promo code FOOTBALLERS. It will be the best suit of your life. Hey, this is Darren Waller, tied in for the Las Vegas Raiders. I am the Wallerus, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Goo goo ka -choo! Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, I'm Andy Holloway. Tuesday, October 5th, the waiver day. Got a great show for you. A lot is happening. Injuries, of course. Yeah, of course. And uh, we'll be heading into, what, week five? That is correct. So, I have heard some concerns from people that have had a rocky start and sure. one of the questions that they bring up is like okay I have a couple of stars right I have a Cooper Cup and yet I'm somehow sitting here one and three or maybe even oh and four it just hasn't gone my way I've dealt with other injuries McCaffrey or somebody do they make a move do they do they ship out these players that are proven just to mix it up right yeah, you you definitely don't ship them out just to mix it up. Um, that's the wrong. That's called tilt trading. Saying like, oh, I just I gotta I gotta have a change because the reality is, go back and look at your team and go look at the league and say, would I have won if I played this team or that? You know what I mean? Like, uh, there is a there is a big aspect of uh you know luck in this game and. Now, make trades. Make trades if they're necessary. And where I think that they become more necessary for teams that have struggled with injury or, um, like, for instance, uh, last week I I traded Stephon oh, Diggs man. for David Montgomery. Woof. In a vacuum, I would take Stephon D Diggs ahead of Montgomery, but I lost Christian McCaffrey. I had no running back, too. I needed to win, and so I made that trade. That trade worked out for me. My running backs were okay. I got the win. Now... I lost David Montgomery. <laughs> I'm a broken man. But um, sometimes you need to make a move to to manufacture wins. That is okay. But don't just make a trade because you feel like your team has had bad luck and you need to change it. That is not going to work out. Yeah. Look your at favorite. your look at your total points. How are you losing? Is it you made a start sit snafu in which. Look, that happened. I've I've made quite a few. I've heard about people doing that. I've yeah. Made, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the big big winner over here. Uh, I've made 
a handful of them this week or this season, and it's cost me matchups. And so that's what you have to look at. How are you losing? Is it because your team sucks, or is it because you just you made one or two wrong decisions that particular week, and something bounced right for your opponent? So it makes sure it makes sure you're evaluating those things before you just say, "I have to change this." And I think to kind of conclude that thought. If you're four and zero or three and one, that doesn't mean you sit idly by either, right? Because you know we talked yesterday about maybe cashing in on Cordero for a more proven commodity. I am guessing there is a correlation between having Cordero Patterson and being three and one or four and zero at this point in the season. You know, you still need to be active. You still need to be moving forward with your season, long term, short term. Um, every week should be a, a new opportunity, regardless of record, to kind of appropriate or, or take an evaluation of your team and then make make the right moves mm -hmm. because things change in an instant. Injuries, player situations. There is no autopilot in fantasy football now more than ever. So uh, we'll hopefully help you out today when we talk through the waivers. Uh, we do have a giveaway right now. It's going through the end of the month. If you would like a chance to win a signed Darren Waller jersey. Oh, yeah. Goo -goo -goo uh, Darren Waller's that. Uh, he's the tight end for the Raiders that spikes the ball no matter what he does. Have you seen him? <laughs> oh, man. He let, he let those defenders know that I caught that ball and there's nothing you could do about it. And you suck. And then he said something terrible about the ref's mother. Um, that's why he got the taunting penalty. Yes, clearly. FootClanGiveaway.com to enter that giveaway for free. FootClanGiveaway.com. I didn't like how we spiked the ball. Yeah, it was funny because the ex it, it, <laughs> they huddled up to discuss it. And when they left, they came up with the strategy of it was too close to their bench. Did you like it? No, I didn't like it. No, I. That is the actual. That was a quote. That was from the actual referee discussion. I have many words I would like to say, but I will not say on this. Podcast. Well, he did. I mean, the next big first down he caught, he spiked the ball in the middle of the field, and apparently that wasn't close enough to the opponent's bench. But we don't need to get into that today. We've got too many other things to talk about. But reaction to the Monday Night Football game, Josh Jacobs was active and had all the work. I mean, that was number one. So if you yes. if you had gone into Monday Night with Peyton Barber thinking you would get him as a flex or something. He was worthless. One carry. Josh Jacobs was uh, not worthless. I mean, <laughs> yeah, 13 for 40. He did uh, have five catches, five receptions. So in a so, full PPR, you were, you were fine with him, but it is amazing. The difference of Josh Jacobs, you get in wins and losses. And I know it's a chicken or the egg thing where if he plays well, they win the game, but it's just crazy. The disparity between how good he is on the ground, whenever they end up winning and how bad, you know, it's like, Maybe what you need to do is watch these games and see if J Josh Jacobs looks good or not, and then immediately figure out who's going to win that game. I will say the I don't remember when Peyton Barber got his opportunity. It wasn't you know at the very beginning of the game, but he did get hurt, so I, he went into the tent, and I I don't think he came back after that. Stars of the game: Austin Eckler was number one. Uh, Jared Cook was up there, six for seventy and a touchdown for Cook, heavily involved, which is in interesting because um, Parham Jr. Was also uh, he also caught a touchdown pass? Caught the first touchdown pass, and as someone who's been rolling with Jared Cook, it was like, oh come on! Yeah, I I've been playing Jared Cook weekly, and this was finally it was like, okay, I'm tired of getting 30 yards, and then of course, if you it explodes, if you played Mike Williams thinking you just needed a couple points to win, you didn't win. Yeah, brutal. So that was the most disappointing part of the evening. Him uh, and Keenan. I mean, like right if you're in, if you're in a PPR. Fine, but seven receptions for 36 yards yeah. is gross. Yeah, they had – both offenses had trouble, especially in the first half, getting prolonged drives going, right? Mm -hmm. There wasn't – it wasn't like they were moving the ball down the field and then settling for a field goal or punting at the 50. They were like three and outs and or one first down. It was a struggle and a slog in the first half. Any other takeaways? I mean, I'm never sitting in the car again. You're he sending can, it to the shop? I mean, the car – the car exists best when it is not being seen or right. used. It's, it's like uh, uh, Boo, the ghost yeah, it's from the, from Mario. Thank you, Mike. If you're if you're looking, he, he just sits, just he, sits there and does nothing. But as soon as you turn your back, he's on the move. 
Um, it's coming to get you. Yeah, he it, despite not getting to 200 yards, he does still lead the league in passing yards um, right now. The only other big takeaway that I would see is the uh, the the Brian Edwards hope and experiment or whatever we want to call it. I've had I still have him on uh, almost every roster where I drafted him. He's done enough where I've I've held. Uh, but this game was the final straw where I, I am going to move on from Brian Edwards. Someone like Hunter Renfro is just so much more trusted. And even though he doesn't have the same physical attributes to be able to really have a, you know, a, a, a monster breakout for fantasy like Brian Edwards might, um, Renfro is he's just solid. Yeah, I mean, it's it's another piece of the puzzle for fantasy players that we need to bring up more often. The game plan is never built around utilizing Brian Edwards. He is a desperation utilization player late in games. That's when you've seen him, right? Fourth quarter. But n you never go into the game. I mean, you don't go for a first down to him, right? Like, isn't the, fir the third down play is when you know whether a team trusts somebody. They never go to him. And this is nothing against Brian Edwards. This is an, a coaching choice. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. All right, let's move on. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. All right. Where there's smoke, there's fire for this week. Let's start with number one. Taylor Heineke, quarterback for the Washington football team. The last three weeks, quarterback 12 in week two. Quarterback nine in week three. And then this past week oh, man. against Atlanta, quarterback five so I mean that is smoke there has been three straight weeks where Taylor Heineke is a top 12 quarterback there is definitely a lot of smoke the question is is it real is there is there fire beneath it or is this going to smolder out and the reality is um his his rushing work uh which we saw you know it's it's kind of ramped up um, went from six yards in his first start to 21 yards this last week, 43 yards. At the very least, you see that he can get on the move um, and, and utilize the legs. I think that helps solidify this. He's thrown multiple touchdowns in every single start. Uh, and one of these games, you know, was a top 10 performance against Buffalo, who is, I would say that we would all agree they're a top five defense oh, right now yeah. like you know, the buffalo looks awesome and he had himself quite a game against them so um i i i do have a difficult time trusting i'll be honest um i he's not a heralded um you know he's been in the league for five years so Which this is shocking you, right you think like oh taylor heineke maybe he was a rookie last year who's finally getting his shot no the, he's been in the league for for five seasons he was with uh, the Carolina Panthers, um, and with the old regime, moved over to Washington with them. He has some weapons, right? He's not afraid to throw it at Terry McLaurin, which is great. He's getting Curtis Samuel back, although he loses Logan Thomas and is coming up against the New Orleans Saints in a very good defense this week. I believe that he is a streaming candidate that I am willing to play on a good matchup but I don't think this is fire where he's going to be what he's been these last three weeks, which is a consistent top 12 quarterback. That's that's my outlook on, on his tape. That, that's why I lean as well, but he's so aggressive, which that's why like, normally a backup comes in and they're like, ah, I really hope I don't lose the game for my team. And Taylor Heineke's out there doing work. I mean, look at his shot against the Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs last year. The dude went after it. It's so that type of a mentality in a quarterback, that's perfection. When you have a true number one wide receiver, and he knows, well, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna keep going to this guy over and over. It's a, it's a, sorry, one other thing. He is two and one as a starter, and not because of the defense. It's because right. of him. Yes. Like he has, he has won them some games. It, it's funny though, because two of the three good performances, literally the last play of the game, in both of them, was the play that defined the fantasy performance, and they were both ironically. You know, heaves to J.D. McKissick, who went flying down the sideline. Sure. That being said, I think it's fire. And the fire is not – I think the way you choose Taylor Heineke's start spots is not the way you would normally choose it. It's not about, is it a good matchup the defense we're playing? Mm. It's, is it a good matchup the offense they're playing? I like okay. it. Because yeah. Washington is struggling. 
And so when you look at, if you think they're going to give up points, Heineke is aggressive enough against any defense to get you points. But if they think that they can manhandle an, an opponent, like if they were playing Houston, I would actually be more hesitant because they'll use the run game. The defense will have success. So I think it might be a little bit of a stream when they're having, you know, playing a Buffalo or playing a Kansas City. And I, I get that, and they're playing Kansas City two weeks from now. So. It, yeah, followed by Green Bay, and Curtis Samuel is back. Yes, that is will help. Back. That I will mean, help. He, Curtis Samuel was only on the field for limited snaps. It was like 30 five or 37 percent but he saw multiple targets in that time. but we would say that's a no then against the saints this week and Jameis winston and the somewhat struggling offense of the saints is it home or away uh this it's game home. would be home i'll play him all right i mean it's all about your options taylor yeah. heineke is not a much Sit star. patrick mahomes <laughs> yeah i'm willing to stream him in that matchup zach moss bill's running back since the weird week one inactive that we thought was a healthy scratch was an unhealthy scratch, he's been 16, 15, 23. He's been touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Yeah, I mean, this is smoke to me. That being said, like he's still a weekly consideration because of the running back position. So um, Devin Singletary looked great as well, right? These are They're destroying people. They're, they're ending up with a quarter in every game that they're not, they don't even have Josh Allen in the game. They're just running the football at the end. I mean, Devin Singletary had a monster run towards the end of the game. So, yeah, you know, I, would I play Zach Moss this week against Kansas City? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I mean, I, and, and you're going to hope for the touchdown. I mean, they, they put up 40 points. It was 40 to nothing last week, and Zach Moss got a touchdown and was the running back 24. He barely snuck into the running back, too. So I, I think that this is, is mostly smoke. It's, it's where there's smoke, there's touchdowns. Um, and if he gets a touchdown, you're going to be happy. If he doesn't, you're going to be disappointed. If you got a bet on a touchdown, I mean, you want him, a good team you, to bet on. You want the, the Bills opportunity to score touchdowns, but I would guess there's going to be more uh, passing touchdowns and rushing touchdowns. So I, I would agree with your your sentiment here. He is someone that should obviously be rostered and can be started, but you're chasing touchdowns, and I don't think he's going to be a weekly RB2. You're chasing touchdowns if you're hoping for this top 15 upside, but I I think you can play him, and even if he doesn't score a touchdown, you can, you'll, you can still be happy. Week two, he got the touchdown, but he still had – over 90 yards from scrimmage. I mean, he's he's part of this offense. Uh, there's, it goes back to training camp. The, the the drum beat for Zach Moss was starting to get loud, and it just, it, you know, you had a, uh, a weird mute break there for week one where it seemed like the team had completely lied to us. But he's he's a part of this offense, so I think that he is a, you know, like a flex type of running back, low-end running back too. All right, this one's tough as well. James Conner, uh, smoke or fire, first two weeks, barely scored any fantasy points. Last two weeks, four touchdowns between the two weeks. And I think more impressively, I mean, he's been a top 12 running back for two consecutive weeks due to the touchdowns, but he had 20 total opportunities in week four against the Rams. Another blowout victory. The team is scoring 30-plus points a week right now in Arizona. Kyler Murray is now the odds-on favorite for MVP. I mean, this is a team putting up 400 yards of offense, and so you're finding value everywhere. The question is, smoke or fire? Will it continue? Does the team, like, are you confident enough to roll him out there as a flex? Yeah, I mean, if I say that Zach Moss is smoke, it would be disingenuous to say that James Conner is fire. They are actually very, very similar in the sense that they are split backfields on great offenses where you're chasing touchdowns that can and have come. Um, so I think he is a flex option, certainly someone that you can throw in there and hope for a touchdown. If I had to pick between the two, though, um, I I would probably pick Zach Moss just because of the receiving game. Um, last week he did get two targets, two receptions, uh, James Conner did. Moss had nothing last week. Uh, right, but generally speaking, on a, on a longer timeline, you look last year at Zach Moss and his utilization in the offense, and he's usually going to be more targeted, whereas Chase Edmonds is the guy that you would ascribe as the passing downs guy for the Cardinals. I, but ironically, they are very, very similar to me in the sense that... Who would you rather have, Mike? I'd rather have Zach Moss. Uh, I, I think he's more reliable. The 20 opportunities is certainly fascinating. I don't recall off the top of my head how much of that had to do with the 
uh, shellacking that they they placed upon the Rams. You know, like was it towards the end of the game? They're like, okay, we're going to give the ball to James Conner here just to to run out the clock. He was he was inefficient, only two point uh, two point eight yards per carry. But it is it, it is fire that he is the goal line back. Chase mm -hmm. Edmonds got one. He got a shot in in this game. But back we we were mentioning in week one where. James Conner technically did not get a carry at the goal line, but he was the guy who was in. There was they were about to give him the ball, then a penalty happened, and then Kyler took it in. So there is it's fire that Chase Edmonds is not going to to really take over that goal line role. Six carries inside the five yard line in the last two weeks, and you're right, Mike. There should have been there was going to be carries inside the five. That's where the touchdowns come. So I guess yeah. if you're banking on a touchdown, you could make that argument that James Conner would be greater sign from an opportunity standpoint. Both it's could be vultured by their quarterback. I'd rather have Moss for because I think it's a an inverse. Right? I think Chase is the primary ball carrier, and I think Moss is the primary ball carrier. Yeah, that's fair. So, so I would lean that direction. Kind of feels like a like Lindell White on that old Tennessee team. Oh where yeah, sure. Where you're like, you can be just fine with Conner. I went up against him this week. It was like, oh. Nice. I'm going up against James. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. So I mean, <laughs> James Conner and and Zach Moss, they're both slow. I just okay. wanted to say that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Jason. You're welcome. Um. Oh, we do have an update. You would though. know about that. We yeah. do. We, we did have an update that happened last night. Uh, the Cardinals are in fact the only undefeated team in the NFL. That's right. But and we handle that with class. Well, yes. I mean, we would never. <laughs> oh baby. Four and zero oh is only one team, and it's the Cardinals. Did you see the? Uh, uh, I saw a tweet that said like the USA Today reluctantly places Arizona at number one of their that, power rankings. We don't have a choice. <laughs> um, look, I, I'm. Sh I've always been optimistic. This year, I wasn't optimistic. I was not either. So this is great. Jason's, are, yeah, Jason's been, wearing his NBA Finals Phoenix Sun shirt. That's right. Um, let me just say this. So the Cardinals in the Super Bowl. will not win another game. Oh, I like it. Thank you. I yeah, like it. I agree. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. All right. That was Where There's Smoke, There's Fire, presented by Traeger Grills. Put a Traeger Wood Pellet Grill on your starting lineup. Make every game day more delicious. Head to Traeger.com slash footballers to discover how simple wood-fired cooking can be. And before we get to the news and notes, want to thank today's sponsors, First Leaf. Look, anyone who drinks wine knows that the options are limitless, which is unlimited. Why, yeah, finding a wine that you actually like, it could be hit or miss. First Leaf is awesome because they are a, a curator of wines that are tailored to you and your preferences. I used to think my favorite wine was a Pinot Noir. Because I found a Pinot Noir and I liked it. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll just always buy this. Because you don't always know what you're getting. Over time, you know, I've used the First Leaf app. I rate these wines and I've gotten more and more to my taste. And it turns out, I think I'm more of a red Zinfandel guy. Oh. I mean, I didn't know that, but so First fancy. Leaf did. Um, and I'm getting wines that are so great. They are uh, a, a phenomenal company. Uh, not so secret uh, information about First Leaf. They work directly with the winemakers, which means you get incredible wine at sixty percent off of reef uh, off of retail. First Leaf is so confident that you'll love the wine. They have a one hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. If you receive a bottle that isn't exactly what you're hoping for, they're going to credit your account. Join today and get six bottles of wine for twenty nine ninety five and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. That's six bottles of wine for twenty nine ninety five and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. And before we jump into the news, also want to thank Head and Shoulders for sponsoring the podcast. Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology is never not working to give you one hundred percent dandruff protection, even between washes. Now, Brooksy, we've got a never not working segment. What tomorrow? Thursday. Thursday. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thursday. Well, every single day you can be never not working in fantasy and you can be never not working with Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, protecting you against flakes, whether it's Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, regular use, it's an invisible shield of protection, Jason. Invisible. And yet there. Against that's dandruff. A, that's better than a visible one. It's right. Like a force field. Yeah, I mean, you could it's put... awesome. I mean, you could put a visible shield of protection, but your hair doesn't look very no. good. No. So, uh, you know, I've used Head & Shoulders for, for a long, long time. Uh, we thank them for supporting the show, and you can get up to 100% dandruff protection. There's never not working... 
with head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Well, we have big injury news, which is going to directly impact our waiver show. David Montgomery, the news uh, expected to be sidelined for four to five weeks, according to ESPN. Tell me how to feel. Tell me how I should handle this emotionally, because I already knew it wasn't going to be season ending. Mm hmm. And so I'm hoping. <laughs> how does that make you feel? That is how. For... I, that is how I felt. Yeah. Ah, uh, look, four to five weeks. Oh, it's very jazzy. Four to five weeks. I think you should feel relief. I mean, he can go into your IR spot, and in a month you could have David Montgomery back. Also, how's that taste, Matt Nagy? We got the information, you clown. Oh, you're referring to Mike, uh, in case anybody out there listening is confused, the fact that they weren't going to give us the information until Wednesday? Yeah. Correct. Once I saw that report, I was like, oh, we'll have it sooner. Well, you just, yeah, hopefully, but we did it. Yeah, I mean, you can't, Good sequ work out you can't there. sequester so, the whole team. So here's the crazy thing. When he said that he's not giving the information out until Wednesday, I had hope that, like, could he, could he make it back? You know what I mean? Like, because otherwise, what advantage is there? There's no advantage to holding this on until Wednesday. There's no advantage for like eighty percent of the things that he does. They won. They won this past week. Yeah, you beat the Lions. He's a genius. <laughs> um, four to five weeks. I mean, this is going to be Damian Williams. This is going to be maybe a, a cursory shot on on Khalil Herbert. Yep. Zach Taylor said that the team is viewing Joe Mixon's low grade ankle sprain as more of a day to day concern than a week to week one. Honestly, I'm sick and tired of hearing week to week constantly. I'm not sure what week to week really means. So is Zach Taylor. So he switched it. Yeah, I, day to day. I mean, that sounds better. I mean, if we can get to hour, hour to hour, I mean, we're gonna be gold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, minute to minute. Yeah, I would expect him. Um, I, and maybe this is solely because of what this team did last year. But I would expect him to miss this week. Um, last year with the foot injury, they're not gonna place him on IR. He's He's week to week. He's going to be back any minute, you know, and then it, that was week seven. And then he wasn't back week eight or nine, I, or 10 or 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I think he'll play. I, I do. I mean, he's got the long, he's got the long wait after the Thursday night game, but I'm, that's just a gut. I mean, you think he's going to be out. I think he's going to play. Who knows? I mean, you, you have to make plans. Yes, you do. Can't go into, a, you know, that, that would be like going into Monday night with just, <laughs> Josh Jacobs yeah. and waiting to see if he's activated. Uh, Rob Gronkowski expected to miss this week's game against the Dolphins, but they think he'll be back for week six. Really? Which is absolute bananas. The The latest report I saw were it was multiple fractures and a punctured lung. Now, was that the official report? That's what I, I saw, hear, too. I did not hear the I, It was Glazer lung. said that. Yeah, a bunch of cracked ribs. How could he go out and play I don't know, a man. week from now? He's he's historically recovered extremely fast from these types of injuries, so I think they were holding out. They just didn't want to rule him out. Like, does that motivate you as a player? Like, if, uh, genuinely, for, like, rehab. Would it motivate you if a team doesn't rule you out right away? I mean, to be like, hey, maybe he can get back. Sure, if there is something I could actually do about it. I don't know what you can do to rehab broken ribs. That's fair. Besides That's fair. <laughs> Like, you're like, flex mm, harder. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to rest so hard. I'm not going to move from this Is it chair. humming? I'm it might be humming. I'm drinking nonstop milk and eating bananas. <laughs> These bones are going to heal. Wait, is that how you treat your bones? Yeah, calcium, man. Oh, yeah. What's with the bananas? That's the potassium. Yeah, you got to have potassium and Pot calcium. <laughs> and calcium? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, hope he just ship, ship him a whole bunch of bananas, see if he gets better. <laughs> Antonio Gibson, possible rib injury. We're just monitoring it. Um, I don't think he's in trouble. I mean, there has been no no rumblings from the team at all yeah, but about this injury. It is, it's something to pay attention to, though. The, the, the team is not talking about it. We, I mean, let's hear tomorrow or, or today about some practice reports. He already had the shin, but there he took a completely unguarded uh missile defender right into his ribs so just it, know about it even though it's not being talked about if you want one good strategy thing for fantasy players 
it's tough in the streets when oh, it yeah, comes. He got ribbled. He got ribbled. <laughs> Uh, it's tough in the streets when it comes to running backs, right? Like, there's not a lot of options on the waiver wire, and we'll talk about it today. If you are in a situation where you don't have the ability to pick up a running back, you can just insure certain running backs. I mean, if you want to make sure you're okay, Jarrett Patterson is going to be the starter if Antonio Gibson misses a game this year. That's mm-hmm. just done. He'll he'll get all those reps. And there are a lot of situations like that where if you can't pick up an alternate running back, you're kind of locked and loaded. You're safe. You won't get the bye week, but you'll have somebody to cover you if you're in that boat. Logan Thomas week to week. Uh, that would be a point against Taylor Heineke, by the way. Um, getting Curtis Samuel back, but might be missing Logan Thomas for a week or two. And then Will Fuller has already been ruled out. Uh, broken finger. They traded Jakeem Grant mm-hmm. today. Makes Jalen Waddle look interesting in PPR formats. Sure. And then Devontae Parker, if you're desperate. And, and Gasicki. True. What else is going on? Uh, oh, we yeah. thought we'd see Trey Lance. But Jimmy Garoppolo is not a doctor. Hashtag not a doctor. He thought he'd miss a few weeks when he was in his press conference. Now it's being diagnosed not as a craft strain, but as a contusion. Mm. So that is a significant difference in even the way like Matthew Betts was evaluating the injury. It had mm-hmm. been reported a strain. He's not been ruled out for week five, and he may practice on Wednesday and play in Sunday's game. Interesting. Um, as, a up, fan, bro. as as a Cardinals fan, I would say let's let's heal up. Let's let's get out there. You let's want go. Jimmy out there? Yes, I no, want. No, I I would much rather have Trey Lance out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, rookie quarterbacks have struggled this year. Uh, George Kittle day to day with a calf injury, and then Elijah Mitchell, the missile himself, may be back. He's going to practice without a non contact jersey. People getting ribbled all over the place. It takes time to get back. Is the McRib back? Oh, gosh. <laughs> is that, are they just siphoning from the players all the... Uh, uh, look, you give me del- your marrow. It's delicious. Anything else, Judge? You got anything for us? That's all for now. All right. Make sure you grab the Sleeper app. Subscribe to the Breaking News channel. They are the leader in Breaking News alerts. And uh, when these updates come through, you'll hear a little sound and you'll be sitting pretty. Mm-hmm. Head of your league. Yeah. Put me in, coach. Is the McRib back? It's, yeah, it's an honest question. I'd... Oh, it's it's a question that some people ask. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Delicious. There was one more piece of news that Brooks didn't want to share for oh. whatever reason. But uh, Big Ben hip injury. What? <laughs> Seems right. I mean, that's according to Mike Tomlin. Oh. So it just came through. Did he just say that from watching film? He has to have a hip injury. <laughs> like, uh, my, by hips, my guess, that's, hip that's not nice. Jason. It's that's not, not nice. nice, and neither is the play of Ben Roethlisberger. It's so, true. Uh, it's tip for tat. Yeah, that was a sleeper alert that just came in. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. I mean, is that a situation where it doesn't matter if he misses for the first time in his career? I think it does matter because I would feel more confident playing Deontay Johnson with Big Ben yeah, no than question. without. So, And right now, he's... Uh, you know, the two players you're confident in playing are Najee and Deontay Johnson. And both of those players' confidence levels go down, um, even if it's better for the Steelers, which it very well might be better for the Steelers to get Dwayne Haskins in. Think about the sentence that was just said. It might um, not be better. It might be play calling. Sure. You know what I mean? It might just be, yes, Big Ben is kind of toast, but he also can't execute an offense with no inventiveness whatsoever that is checked down oriented yeah that could be it but I'm just I would be surprised because this offense looks 100 percent identical to last year and they what's had a the different, commonality they had a different <laughs> offensive coordinator it was Big Ben doing what he wants to do on the field or what he can do on the field they bring they you know they changed the offensive coordinator because they didn't like what last year was and it looks the same so yeah the commonality here I think is Big Ben so James Conner to be clear four touchdowns this year Najee Harris zero rushing touchdowns is that accurate no, I thought he got one last week. Did he get a rushing touchdown? Yeah. He got a touchdown. Uh, was it rushing or receiving? I thought he's only had a receiving touchdown. Let me I, could, look. I could be wrong. That might be his first one. Yeah, he got a rushing touchdown. Mm-hmm. You're talking about uh, RB9, 5, and 11 <laughs> last three weeks? Yeah. Najee yeah. domination. It's hard to watch, but it works. He gets the ball a lot. All right, waiver pickups at the wide receiver position. I don't know if the pickups are more difficult than the drop decisions this week. I mean, it is kind of draw a line in the sand, final straw time for a, a lot of players. 
And some of them, I don't know if you have the intestinal fortitude to drop, to be honest. And when I say you, I mean me too. I mean, like, the fantasy community may not be able to drop certain players because of the pain it will cause you. I see this list of five player names you're going to go through, and I feel like I'm pretty confident on where I stand on them. So let me go through them with you then. Okay. And uh, Allen Robinson. I would not drop Allen Robinson. Robbie Anderson. I would not drop Robbie Anderson because looking at him compared to the other options on the waivers right now, 11 targets last week, I think he is a fine play this week. Brandon Ayuk. He's gone. He, you can't roster him. He's got a bye week next week. Um, he has done pretty much nothing, and you're not going to be able to trust him with either a hobbled Garoppolo or a rookie quarterback this week. So, yeah, he's he's Baxter off the bridge. Sorry. Oof. Rondell Moore, Cardinals I'm, wide receiver. I'm letting Rondell Moore go as well. I'm I'm willing to drop Rondell Moore, but he he is one of these rookie wide receivers that as time goes through the season, his role can certainly change and and if he does start getting more snaps, he will be very valuable. It's so hard cuz I am staring down this decision in our league of record with Rondell Moore. Mm -hmm. I've AJ Green on the same team. Like I literally just grabbed them both and I was like, mm, "Let's see how it shakes out." It's so hard because I don't you're right. It could happen, but I right now I don't see the path of where like like target shares going. Chase Edmonds is higher. Hopkins, Green, Max Williams is higher. Like that's where it gets hard with Rondale Moore. So I think if you have a better option, I'm comfortable letting him go. And then uh, it's amazing. We said it might be a Robbie problem. You know what I mean? Like Robbie Anderson mm -hmm. and Robert Woods. And Alan Robinson. Oh, oh I didn't man. even think about the uh, Robin. Robert know. Woods, though. What do you do with him? You keep Robert Woods. He, he, but you completely change your expectation. If if Robert Woods was McVay was talking about him sh this week. Yeah, I mean he needs to be a little bit more involved. But is that how he was talking? He, yeah, he was saying it's on me. I got to get Robert Woods the ball. Okay. All all that being said, it's just a matter of the disappointment from draft value. He has not been good. He has not been what you thought. But if he was on waivers, if he was Tim Patrick, you know, Tim Patrick, we're going to talk about he's been relevant last year, this year, the last three games, four targets, five targets, six targets. Robert Woods, the last three games, nine targets, six targets, six targets. The targets are there for Woods. Sure. The offense is better for Woods. Yes. You're super disappointed. Act like Robert Woods is someone you just got off of waivers and then use him moving forward like that. You just got to... So Cut him mentally and then re-sign him mentally and now... Oh, oh it's like a fresh $0 mental, fab. Exact, a mental cut. A mental cut. That's right. I like it. Like and, to work up a mental <laughs> Uh I, Those five <laughs> names, I know you said you'd cut Ayuk, so he would be a no in this category and same with more. Are you buying low on any of them? If you're not cutting them, are you buying low? Because there are, they're cut candidates for a reason. So all those teams that have them, if it's not you, they want to cut him. If, Maybe they'd rather get value for him. If you don't... like. You're you're looking strong. You're looking three and one. You're four and zero, oh, and you you don't need this player in your starting lineup. I would still try and trade for Allen Robinson. I would do that with Robinson and Woods. Those yeah. are the two from that list. Yeah, and I would throw in a dynasty buy of Allen Robinson because is this because you want someone to trade for him from your team? No, I would not sell Allen Robinson in oh, dynasty okay. right now because the value is low. The reason I'm suggesting the 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 trade target is because the value is so low. Uh, he is still an absolute one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Um, I don't I don't think that there's doubt from just about anyone out there. He's been bad for fantasy. So in dynasty, he's on the franchise tag. He might go to a new home next year. I still think he's got much 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 brighter days ahead of him. For someone that drafted Robert Woods, you're probably not getting him because he scored that late touchdown and gave him mm -hmm. fantasy points. All right, likely rostered options to, to just take a glance, make sure they're not sitting there, but LaVisca Chenault, uh, wide receiver for Jacksonville, he's going to have an opportunity because DJ Chark is done for the year. So both Chenault and Marvin Jones will be heavily involved yeah, in the Yeah, the volume should game. go up. And then Emmanuel Sanders is, is heavily involved again every single week. It seems like he's going to be a part of the game plan. He's probably going to go absolutely nuclear against Kansas City this week. So if he's out there, pick him up. If he's not out there and you have him, start him. Main waiver wire pickups to look at. Mike was was ahead of it, told people on Sunday Live uh, in the morning. He said, pick up Jamison Crowder. Ends up with nine targets, seven for 61 and one. I expected him to take every Braxton Berrios target that had been happening, and he came right in, scored a touchdown. Is he your top wide receiver pickup this week, or would that go to Curtis Samuel? It, <sighs> Jamison Crowder, 
it's he's probably my top waiver wire guy because like you can pick him up and you can play him against the Atlanta Falcons. Like I'm not worried. I'm very happy to play all my wide receivers against the Atlanta Falcons. The one wrinkle for this plan will be uh, Elijah Moore, the rookie. That if he is now out of the concussion protocol. How does the offense look when both of them are on the field? That's that's an unknown at this point. I would still side that Jamison Crowder is going to be that nine target type of a player, like huge opportunity. It's it's, it's a slot target, so it's not like a, a high value target, but you're going to see a lot of them. And is, especially the PPR Crowder is he's a, he's immediately flex worthy. Yeah, I, I would agree. Crowder Crowder is my number one pickup because of the known volume. Sometimes the lack of upside and the lack of dominance is overshadowed for the value they provide for a fantasy roster. Um, I went out this last week and because of injuries on my team, I paid up for Christian Kirk who could blow up and have a monster week. And, and then I grabbed Hunter Renfro and there's something really, really nice about if you're talking about, uh, you know, your flex, a uh, double flex of having someone that you could plug in and know you're getting points. It might not be a 25 point barn burner, but they are going to fill the gap. And that's what Jamison Crowder is to me. And and I would add Hunter Renfro to that uh, list and maybe even a Randall Cobb while uh, MVS is out. Those those guys that they're not going to go out there and give you a top 10 week. And maybe you're hoping that, you know, you've got a Rashad Bateman on the waivers. This rookie unknown, maybe he'll go out and be a superstar. But sometimes what you need is just a guy that's going to go out there and catch a few passes, a Cole Beasley type that will score fantasy points. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, that's really all that matters. I, I, I lean Curtis Samuel if he's out there ahead of Crowder because uh, Crowder's going to go into the bye week in two weeks. Mm hmm. Although I do like him, I like the fact that Zach Wilson is manufacturing a little bit of offense. I mean, they've battled back. They deserve credit for winning that ball game against Tennessee. They put up a lot of offense, and Corey Davis was back in action. But I think Samuel represents both of those things that you're talking about. I they, agree. They paid so much money in the off season for him. He's, you know, his head coach is familiar with him in his first game, which people expected limited snaps. That's what you got. Thirty-seven percent of snaps, still had four catches. I think, you know, he's probably rostered. People have been holding him due to the draft capital, but are you but are you willing to put Curtis Samuel into the starting lineup this week? Yes, hesitantly. It's it, I like I will probably be playing him in our league of record team. That's that's my, you know, the okay. injuries have dictated that. Obviously, that doesn't mean he is someone that I would start over great options. Um but he, you know, 39% of snaps, got four targets, caught four balls. Logan Thomas out. I, I think he'll be involved enough to have a baseline. Now, Rashad Bateman's on this list. I'm not interested in Rashad Bateman. Nor am I. So, Mike, take it away. I'm interested. If you're in a deeper league, I think he should be stashed and see what he can possibly become. Like We're at that point now uh, where the first chunk of the season is done. and you're like Four weeks in. Okay, now what is the next chunk going to bring? He was a first-round pick. For a reason, he is an incredibly skilled wide receiver. Uh, so far, I mean, if you want to talk about the hit rate of the rookies, Jamar Chase, sensational. Devontae Smith, excellent. So uh, Rashad Bateman has an opportunity. because It's Hollywood Brown and, and Mark Andrews, but there's no other – there's no second wide receiver on this team that has taken over that job, and Bateman could – he could – theoretically get it immediately I don't think the second wide receiver on this team is going to do enough is going to be valuable enough in the passing game. that's my issue now that Marquise Brown has really looked like he's established himself as the wide receiver one and you know Mark Andrews will always be involved if Bateman comes in and fully establishes that wide receiver two for the team that won't be enough to me he has to completely supplant Hollywood Brown and and based on the play of Hollywood so far this season, I, I just doubt that's going to happen. Here's Maybe. a name. As, we, Lamar Jackson has thrown the ball over 30 times three of the four weeks. Like, yeah, they, there has been an offensive shift for that team. Yeah, they lost all their running backs. <laughs> yeah, and they and they have just AARP squad back there holding it down. And uh, I don't know. They, you think it's a, write, a write off? Maybe that's why those three guys are there. <laughs> it's a, they yeah, get a tax write off? The, the actions of the team over, through the offseason – 
signaled they want to pass at least a little bit more than they have in, in the past. So I I think that the this this volume could be stickier for Lamar than than you believe. Okay, so uh, one more name I think worth bringing up. We haven't talked about him a lot, but Andy is your this is your guy, Darnell Mooney. Out here, he's available in half the leagues. He just had a five for 125 yards. Um, it would have been much larger, too, if the Lions could have done something. Right. So how are you feeling about Darnell Mooney? I think he's a core piece of the offense. So it's hard emotionally going, you know, ping-ponging between weeks with the Bears. I mean, there's so much kind of – there's clouds hanging over the team, a quarterback, head coach, the Allen Robinson situation. And I think lost in that is the fact that Darnell Mooney is essential to the offense. So uh, if you believe that the quarterback situation can improve, that some of these matchups are going to be passing game situations, I mean, they're not going to run against Tampa Bay in week seven. You know, they're, they've got some matchups on the road here coming up. I am, he, you know, he's flex worthy with boom potential every week. Yeah, I definitely agree. He should be picked up. Randall Cobb, A.J. Green. No, it's not 2014. But it feels like it after this past week. Both of those guys are spot start candidates. If you need somebody, you can turn that direction. I mean, A.J. Green is on the field yes. almost the entire game. He's had six targets in each game, all four games, six targets. You're going to get six targets to A.J. Green. He's always got a chance for a touchdown. He's been really good at downfield uh, receptions so far this year. Do you feel great starting him? No, you kind of just you just do it, and you know I'm staring down like Marvin Jones this week or AJ Green. I'm I'm gonna go with Marvin Jones, I think, but you know, guaranteed points. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you really compare it to my argument for Jamison Crowder, would you rather have six receptions from Crowder or five from AJ Green? Probably five from AJ Green. Yeah, if probably. if you knew they were gonna get that, because Crowders are all going to be at the line of scrimmage, and, and A.J. Green's getting air yards. And Kadarius Toney from the New York Giants, their rookie, he, in his first real shot, nine targets, turned into six for 78. He looked very juicy <laughs> on that field. I like him better than Bateman as a pickup. Okay. Oh, I don't disagree with that because uh, Kadarius Toney is playing actively, and we don't know the, the status of Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton yet, but if they're out and – this matchup is against Dallas. Like Kadarius Tony will have to do something. People want to talk about Josh Gordon as a potential pickup. Thoughts? Josh Gordon, sign with the Chiefs, maybe active for Sunday night football, Josh Gordon. I would I would rather pick up every single name we talked about personally. I, I would as well, but that doesn't mean you should ignore Josh Gordon. They're, they're one of the reasons people want to talk, you know, it's not – we've been through this – Oh, many, many times. times. This right? is a fool me five times situation. But I mean, uh, it was New England. It was Seattle. It was – the only thing that's interesting here is that there really is – none of the other receivers have done anything. We knew we know who McCall Hardman is. We know who Demarcus Robinson is. We know who Byron Pringle is. So if there was ever a situation that his career could be rebirthed, and they say he's in great shape. I don't know if you saw him in the uh, what is a fan controlled football league. He was playing he is, in that. It's impossible for Josh Gordon to be in bad shape. It's really not something that you. It's hard to say to put him on your bench in a dynasty league. Yes, where you have a long, long bench. It's hard to justify a spot in a redraft. And I'll be the first to admit it. But um, Andy Reid, you know. Yeah, I agree. We just saw Cordero Patterson get unlocked for the first time in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, running back drop candidates. Yeah. Tyson Williams was a completely healthy scratch. The team has invested in Murray. I think Murray's locked as the one. I agree with that. But do you drop? I mean, is it Bison to Tyson? Yeah, I, I think it's Bison. You, if you're a healthy scratch. And, and there then are cry. You do, and there you do are a cry son too. three active veteran running backs I I mean it's going to be a while because there's no chance in the world you're playing him you know if you keep him and they say he's going to be active you're not going to put him out there this week so now he's got to have multiple weeks to show it and then you already know what can happen unexpectedly so I don't want to deal with the headache I, I'm moving on from from now Mike Tyson. is actively rooting against the Ravens for the remainder of the I, season 
Yeah, uh, unfortunately, He's very bitter. I am pretty upset with what John Harbaugh has done to me personally, and <laughs> uh, I'm not dropping Williams just yet. If I if if we get another, if we get a second week in a row of a healthy scratch, and you want to drop him that morning as soon as the news comes through, then that's that's fine. That's the probability says that's what is going to happen. I'm now, okay with that. Now, Le'Veon Bell. I wouldn't cut him, no. Lev, Lev Bell got four attempts for 11 yards. I mean, it's maddening. It is maddening. These guys are exactly who we thought they were. They are old, washed-up running backs. Latavius Murray is is not nearly as, as washed as the other guys, and he's reliable. But that's that's such a strange move to me to go with, with well, we we need someone who can get us three yards. Like that's not going to win. I think they need someone the that long can term. protect the ball. And sure, they, they want a game manager at running back, which is rare, but that's that's where the Ravens are because they have a running back one at quarterback. Exactly. Um, I want to blitz these drop candidates. Just say yes or no, okay? Miles Gaskin, no. no. Kenyon Drake, yes, no. Damian Harris, no, no. Elijah Mitchell, no. Nope. No, it's just so hard to drop a running back. Yeah. Latavius Murray would be the top pickup, I think, if he's out there somehow. Yeah, more than likely. He 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 was told he was going to be. They're going to ride him. They did. He scored again. He he's probably good, as good as anybody in football for a chance at a touchdown every week. Agreed. AJ Dillon, um, I think he should be stashed. I like, don't mind stashing him at all. Um, uh, I prefer it if I have Aaron Jones and I'm not forcing him onto my roster. If I don't, Jason. Yeah, I'm the same way. I, you know, I view him as an insurance running back. Obviously, last week he had 15 carries, 81 yards. So you, you, that's that's a a flex option you could throw in there. But the context of the game matters. They were blowing them out before the fourth quarter, and and that's where he got uh, most of his work. So I'm I'm I don't think you can possibly put AJ Dillon in a lineup right. prior to an injury to Aaron Jones. So that's what you're getting. And I, to me, there are there are backs who just had their running backs go down. Like, there are insurance backs who just hit the lottery tickets that and are I would now. Cut, I would cut A.J. Dillon for all of them. Exactly my point. So, A.J. Dillon is down the list on on backs I would I would sign, behind and, all of the options of guys who just lost their starter. Yeah, if you need it, and I totally agree with that philosophy, the reason why he is a stash to me, because we'll, like, We'll talk to Fab here what you would be willing to do for Damian Williams and Samaj P. Ryan, and it's not going to be 100%. But if Aaron Jones went down, the, uh, if he misses the rest of the season, A.J. Dillon is a 100% burn. That's why he should be stashed before that happens. Sure. Damian Williams is the main waiver wire pickup of the week. You have David Montgomery mm -hmm. missing four to five weeks. Could be limited when he comes back. Damian Williams will get all of the run. Uh, he dealt with a thigh bruise, which took him off the field for some of this game that got Khalil Herbert. Yeah, it's at the very end. Um, it's really hard to really recommend signing Khalil Herbert because you're almost saying, like, I'm not going to play him if Damian Williams is healthy and active. And so you're counting on an injury from a backup. The backup to the backup. It, it makes it, it – now in a dynasty league, yeah, you need to put him on there in case something happens, but – for me, it's Damian Williams and no one else. The question is, is if you have, you know, if you have Montgomery, how much do you spend on Damian? Probably everything you got. I mean, or close to it. If you have him, what if, if you had Damian? <clears throat> if you had Montgomery, to me, it's like, hey, you're buying a running back spot, and I'm probably going to spend all my fab or all but five, ten percent. Yeah, I mean, this is a known starter for a month. I mean, at running back, that's someone you have to you have to have. That's someone that's going to be in fantasy rosters, not on fantasy benches, but in the active rosters for a month. And you can get them off the waivers at running back. So you, you catch have the to, ball. A yeah, lot. you have to spend whatever um, you think it's going to take in your league to get him. What now, if you What if you didn't have Montgomery though? What are you looking at? Well, I, I I think the majority of teams out there all need help at running back. Um, maybe you don't. I mean, there are certain rosters that are that are awesome, and you could just avoid it. Don't don't worry about spending up to get a running back if you've got three studs. But otherwise, I think 
pretty much every team should go after him, and it just depends on how much you your league 40%. usually spends. 40% for a flex Damian Williams is what I would do. What's okay. your percentage? Yeah, I mean, that's right around there. 40%, 50%, I think, is is what's appropriate. I was a 50 to 60. Okay. for If, you, if he's just going to come in and be your flex? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, people were competing for Chuba for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I mean... You're you're at the point of the year where you really are trying to buy a win. Yeah. And if it takes the majority of your fab to do it to to raise that probability, I think you got to do it. Samaj P. Ryan might get a start for Cincinnati. He's very hard to recommend as a because you don't know for sure. Because you don't know for sure, and you could just overspend here. Now, if you have Mixon, I think you can justify spending more in this situation sure. and just roster both of them. Um, but I'm talking, if I'm mixing, I might do 30%, 40%. If I'm not mixing, it's like not, it's not much. Yeah. I mean, I, I, again, I think he's going to start, but it is maybe a one week rental. And I think you outlaid it very well there. Andy. if you are the mixing manager, you have the ability to, it, it, he means more to you going forward because if it happens to be two weeks three weeks you're going to need him whereas other people won't so yeah I, I would think you spend 30 percent of your budget if you're the the mixing manager and if i'm not the mixing manager and i'm taking a shot because you're going to have to take the shot before you know if he's a starter i'm probably willing to go you know 10 15 percent yeah me too on him um just in case knowing that i could just be lighting it all on fire just in case he's the starter okay and then maybe you uh would you ever recommend, like, if you could get him, I guess you wouldn't be able to get him super cheap and trade him to the mix and owner. Um, Kenneth Gainwell, J.D. McKissick, Jarrett Patterson, uh, Brandon Bolden, who looked to be the guy, J Jeremy McNichols, who's had a couple of good games behind Derrick Henry. Uh, any interest there? Daryl Williams now getting uh, double-digit opportunities in a couple straight weeks, or a couple straight, <laughs> in two straight weeks. Any of those names interest you at running back? Um, I, I think what is interesting to me is, you know, we talk about right now, if you're the mix and manager grabbing Samaj P. Ryan, we talked about uh, two weeks ago, if you were the CMC manager grabbing Chuba, now is the time where if, if before the injury, <laughs> where you could get them cheap, I, I would be grabbing, if you have uh, Antonio Gibson, I would be grabbing Jarrett Patterson. Um, if you have uh, Chris Carson, I'd be grabbing Alex Collins. If you have Clyde Edwards Alaire, I'd be grabbing Daryl Williams. I would be grabbing all of these guys now. It's uh this is the time I think to start to start stashing and protecting your running backs. Sure. And, and as far as standalone value in Kenneth Gainwell uh, from the Eagles, he looks like he is he will be involved absolutely with the the passing downs. It's it's it just seems so hard to it's start. It's very similar. It's, it's the same thing with McKissick. It's very, it's a very similar situation. That's if, a good point. If you're in a PPR, it makes it much easier to start these guys. But if you're in like our formats, we play in a half point PPR. They are difficult to to start, but you know that they'll get a handful of points, and a ceiling is is it's it's possible. Like it it it's not that it doesn't exist where one of these guys can rip off a big play, and Kenneth Gainwell also. Like through the course of the season, beginning he's been getting some work inside the red zone. He has. They bring him in, in like even in goal line situations, which is crazy to me. But he then he scores touchdowns, yeah. so uh, obviously not that crazy. And and his seventeen game pace over the first month of the season, he's on pace for seventy six targets for oh receptions, which and, means I think you can plug him in in a desperation. And McNichols quietly. I mean, 11% of the targets in week one, 8% the next two, and then that skyrocketed against the Jets, which... No Julio, no There's no AJ Julio Brown. and A.J. Brown, but next week... There could there, be no Julio There could be no Julio and A.J. Brown in the game against Jacksonville. He he could be... If you miss out on all these players, look, in your home league, I can't imagine that in your home league that anyone anyone's paying attention to Jeremy McNichols. So he's just a name... Put in the back of your mind that as the the week progresses and you miss say you miss out on everybody at the running back position, McNichols I would, could be your break glass. Yeah, I, uh, in case of emergency, I would definitely be putting in zero dollar bids on Jeremy McNichols and Brandon Bolden. It, 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 at at least putting in a zero dollar bid if you want to try to get these pass catching running backs. Brandon Bolden, the running back for the New England Patriots, who looks like he's inheriting the James White role. Um, those guys should be you know 
put on your roster for, uh, oh, I need a running back and I, I can throw someone in who's going to get some points. Tight ends, are you cutting Robert Tunyon to sign Mike Gesicki or Dawson Knox or Dalton Schultz? Yes. yes. Are you cutting Logan Thomas if you're going to miss him for a week? Are you willing to like move forward with Knox or Schultz or Gesicki, or would you? He's on that cusp where you got to look at your roster. Because you'd it, have two tight ends if you don't do that. I'd rather hold on to Logan Thomas because if Logan Thomas drops to the waiver, like I, you know, I've got, I'm, I'm living in one league where I'm in tight end, you know, purgatory. If Logan Thomas drops, I will scoop him up for sure. So that that's kind of the the other side of of making the decision of do you cut Logan Thomas? Tyler Higby has ping pong between top ten finishes and disappointing weeks. Are you hanging on to Higby? Yes, definitely hanging on to Higby. All right, Gesicki would be your top target. He's heavily rostered after the week he had two weeks ago. Yeah, just take a peek though. Uh, Dawson Knox is half rostered. Dalton Schultz forty percent rostered. Uh, Jason, you called into question the weight for like a. You know Kyle Pitts to you know emerge. Are you playing Dawson Knox or Dalton Schultz or Max Williams over Kyle Pitts I, if you are on if you're waiting? Yeah, I, I think that uh, Dawson Knox, Dalton Schultz, Max Williams should all be picked up. Um, I would not play Max Williams necessarily over Kyle Pitts. The uh, the the nice thing about these three teams is that the offenses are great though. The, the the Cardinals, the Cowboys, and the Bills are going to score a lot more touchdowns than the Atlanta Falcons. Um, the targets have been there for Pitts, so he's not a guy that I think you have to move on from, but if you've been struggling and kind of losing, I, I, you know, I would rather play Dawson Knox at this point, stay in the flames against Kansas City in what's going to be a high-scoring affair this coming week rather than play Kyle Pitts. Uh, he would be the my, my number one target to, to swap. I want to draw attention to the six targets that Tyler Conklin got. Now he did Con nothing. He did nothing with them last week, but it's worth noting. I mean, the offense only scored seven points. He plays Detroit this week. If you want to let everybody else spend a few fab dollars on the bigger names, Conklin could get released after people might have picked him up. Mm -hmm. He could be a drop it like it's hot guy gets dropped, and then you do what Mike did last week and you scoop up a Dawson Knox, and in this case, it'd be Conklin late in the week and start them and have some success. I think Dan Arnold is interesting. Yeah. They lost DJ Chark. They they traded actively for Dan Arnold. And I would not be surprised if you can count on five to six targets for Dan Arnold the rest of the way. Yeah, there's there are some good options on waivers this week for tight end, which is something that we, we haven't been able to say for a, a long, long time. And if Jared Kuk was dropped, um He looked great. He did and and so I, Mike, you you grimace because you I have lived well. because of the uh, because of Cleveland and Baltimore. Sure, and then a bye week. That's that's all I'm grimacing about. Um, I I will say this. You know, I I've been living the Jared Cook life, and that was not good the last two weeks. But I went to make a roster change in the game against you, Mike, um, and pick up a better tight end. And I looked, and I'm like, he was on the field seventy percent of snaps. Yeah, he's running a lot prior. of routes. So I I stuck with him, and thankfully he he came through. The Patriots are probably out there because they played Tampa this past week and they play Houston this upcoming week. So they are oh. the number one pickup by a lot. In fact, they can win your week. Yeah. So don't, you know, when you talk about winning a week by picking up a, a P Ryan for a flex or something like that, like the Patriots, yeah, you could been, they play the jets in two weeks. So pick them up. You're getting two weeks out of it. I would spend some serious fab on them. Yeah. yeah. Go yeah. after the, go after the Patriots, the, the Cardinals, after the the hot start, they were likely dropped because I'm seeing 28 percent rostered. If it's if it's a rookie Trey Lance, I'm interested. If it's a hobbled Jimmy Garoppolo with the pass rush that Arizona has, You're interested. I'm interested. Uh, then the, the, then the next week against Cleveland, not so great, but Houston. So if you're one who stashes a defense. It looks like you could have two or three weeks with the Cardinals as well as the Patriots. And that that's what I do. Like I especially as someone that spent up on Elijah Missile. Like what I'm doing now is I'm paying weeks ahead. Now I'm I'm filling up a bench spot with an extra defense. Sure. But I'm doing that for the fact that I can't compete week to week on fab for these defenses. There's not been a lot of locked in every week defenses. So and it the, is something I'm paying attention to. And the to. Vikings play the Lions, which is great. At home. So and that's they, that's a great streamer. They're at home? Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, they uh their defense has been improving. Yes. All right, let's move on to quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. We'll all hop in since we're talking about that uh, Vikings-Lions yeah, 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 yeah. game. 
Uh, I'm going to take Kirk Cousins uh, against Detroit. He has looked great this year. The Cleveland Browns defense. Sands last week, Kirk. Uh, absolutely. The, the, Dang the, it. The, the Browns defense has looked legit. Miles Garrett getting after people. Um, and that game was just the worst last week. That Vikings-Browns game, so disappointing for fantasy. I don't imagine that the Lions defense is going to give the Vikings quite the same amount of trouble. And with Dalvin Cook's kind of ankle issues right now, they might throw the ball a little bit more. Is J Davey and Clowney healthy? Do we know that? Because I know he got banged up in that game. I am unawares. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go Ryan Tannehill Ooh. at Jacksonville. Even if – even if both dudes are out? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm right. fine with it. It's Jacksonville. This guy McNichols. Yeah, I mean, they just uh, they just lost the game. They're going to bounce back. And you're seeing target share going to Derrick Henry. He's going to do things with it. You saw Josh Reynolds get pretty involved in that game. And uh, I expect he'll, he'll probably have one of his guys back. So I think it's just a streaming opportunity sure. for Ryan Tannehill. Bur barometer check here because we talked about T Taylor Heineke. Would you take uh, Tannehill over Heineke against the Saints? Yeah, I would. Okay. I would because the range of outcomes for Heineke is extreme in a matchup against a really good defense. So even though, even though there's an opportunity there, there's also a like a like a three interception and a fumble, um, troubling day that is in the cards for a backup quarterback. And you know, mine is Trey Lance. I'd, get out of here, Kyle Shanahan. Oh no, you can't with this nonsense. That uh, that Jimmy Garoppolo. You Mike, need a backup, Mike. Trey Lance is probably not playing. Yeah, well, I'm, whatever. I'm sticking to it. Uh, you the, staying in the Flames? Smoke fire with Sam Darnold with, against Philadelphia? Uh yeah, that's that's a perfectly acceptable backup. But it like, I get it. Maybe Garoppolo is somehow heals up and plays this weekend. But Trey Lance needs to be picked up because if he is the starter. You got a little taste of what he can do for fantasy football this past week. And against Arizona, San Francisco will have to score points. Can Trey Lance get it done? That remains to be seen. But he, he, what his profile is, is a monster fantasy quarterback. And I'll throw out one more pivot option. If Kirk Cousins is too much rostered or Trey Lance is not playing, um, this, I think, is a great week for Trevor Lawrence. Uh, you, okay. you just saw Tennessee's poorest defense, Zach Wilson, had a good game. They're at home. I I, I know they lost Chark, but I, I think that uh, Trevor Lawrence is a good play this week. He's running the ball more. Tennessee's defense is terrible. Yep. Just terrible. All right. Um, any other breaking news there, Judge? No, sir. How are you doing today? You having a good day? Yeah. It's been great. It's good. What, you got any lunch plans? You want to get some lunch? Well, I'm going to have my apple salad. You know yeah, that. Yeah, oh, he yeah, is. he is. All right, uh, as we wrap up today's show, we want to thank Traeger Grills. Oh, can yes, I recommend we... the oh. Ironwood 650? You can, and, but uh, I would recommend the 850. Um, I just made some jerky. Is that what your hands went yes, up about? Because you made some jerky that you're proud of? Some Wagyu flank steak jerky. It was the best meat I've ever put in my mouth. Thank you, Traeger. <laughs> yeah, well, what are some of the things that you appreciate about your Traeger, Mr. Moore? Oh, I appreciate how easy it is. I appreciate that I can go sit inside and check the temperature of my meat. I appreciate that I can uh, – that I never burn anything. Like, I, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's always just cooked perfect. Set it and forget it? Yeah. All right, go to Traeger.com slash footballers, and uh, you can check that out out and mike what is pristine auction got going on right now it's the best memorabilia site of all time go check them out they have hundreds of new auctions every single day you only pay for what you buy we've got a beautiful kyler murray jersey up on the wall that was signed by the hands of kyler murray that is beautiful and if you use the code ballers when you sign up you will get ten dollars in credit all right that'll do it for today's episode of the fantasy footballers thank you for supporting the show We'll be back with another episode tomorrow. Good Don't luck fear. on the waivers, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.